The Advanced Guide to Microsoft Excel 2013. It works for me. Another Computer Mama Guide. One of the things that computers do really, really well is organize data into tables, specifically rows and columns. Tables can be little reference lists that look up the answer. This lesson will show how to create a table and then how to use the header row in that table. We'll also format the table with quick styles and then use conditional formatting. That part is fun. This lesson has a sample spreadsheet that you can download and use if you wish. The ribbon that we're going to be focusing on is Table Tools. So if you are ready, please start the program Microsoft Excel and open that sample spreadsheet. Hello Excel and hello sample data. A good administrator makes a copy of the data before messing with it. Please go down to the bottom and right click original data and then move or copy. Check to create a copy. That's okay. Rename the new sheet data tables. That'll be good. So this is a list of the clients that bought products from Charlotte's website. Who bought what? The fields in the header row, that's row one, include the name, date, product, and the amount for the sales. Let's try this. Select the entire spreadsheet and then go to Data, Sort, Sort A to Z. What do you see? By default Microsoft Excel sorted by the first column. It is a date column but it sorted them alphabetically. So I don't see January at the top but April. Try again. Undo. Let's sort this way. Go to Data, Sort, and click on the big button for sort. What do you see? Now we can change how it sorts. The first column is month. It is going to sort on the values but the order is A to Z. Click on that down arrow at order and go to custom list. Date is one of the custom lists and ours is spelled out January, February, March so select the bottom one and then click OK. Now what do you see? It's sorted the way I expected in the calendar. January's at the top. We can sort by more than one criteria. Go back to Data, Sort and Filter Sort. And this time, click on Add Level to add a second row. In the second row, select Date. And I'll leave the order as oldest to newest. Click OK. The data is sorted, but in a long list like this, the details can get lost. A table is an excellent way to organize and format all these details. Here's how we get started. Click on cell A1 and go to Home, Styles. Click on Format as Tables. You're going to see a list of all the different styles. Choose a table style. Excel will ask where is the data for your table. It selected the range of A1 through H69, all of the data in this spreadsheet. It is absolute. Notice there's also a check mark that says my table has headers. That's important. Click OK. Hello table. The data has been formatted as a table. The header row is bold and it has little filters. That's those drop down option list. The rows of customer information have been formatted to make the data easier to read. Let's use those header rows. Click on G1, Sales Rep. And when you click on the filter you can see the options. Choose Connie and Nikki, and then click OK. What do you see? The table has been filtered to show you only the data for Connie and Nikki. Click again on G1, Sales Rep, and use the filter to put everyone back. Alex, Connie, Elizabeth, and Nikki. Click OK. Tables have styles. The styles make it easier to read and format the data. There's light, medium, and dark. The Computer Mama asks, when you format it dark, can you really, really read it? Really? We want people to read our data and to focus on what is important. For that, we can use the table style options. Say you wanted the last column to get more attention. When you use a check mark for last column, what do you see? The data is formatted as bold. That'll work for me. One of the best buttons in the table style options is the total row. Try it. Go to Table Tools Design, Table Style Options, and click on Total Row. There is a new row at the bottom that says Total on the left side, and in the column with the amount, it sums up all of our data. And try this. Click at the bottom of column E 
this is our products. And this time, when you click on the drop-down option, choose Count. There you go. There are 69 products totaled in this column. What happens if we want to add another row to this table? Will it work? Select any row in the sample data and go to Home, Cells, Insert. Insert table rows above. After you insert a new row or column, you may see a small format painter. Click on the arrow and choose the formatting for the new row. Format same as above. I've added some sample data to see if the sums would retotal, and sure enough they did. My software knows how to update its own data. Before we begin the next steps, please take off the total row. Go back to Table Tools Design and uncheck Total Row. There's formatting and then there's conditional formatting. Conditional formatting uses color to show trends or make comparisons, say high, medium, and low. The color depends on the condition that you choose, hence conditional formatting. Select column H. In our sample spreadsheet, this is the one with the money. Now please go to Home, Styles, Conditional Formatting. Click on Top 10. You'll be prompted to choose a color, and if this is money and it's the top 10, I chose green. What do you see? The top 10 values are all formatted green with a light green fill. We can add another rule. Click on Column H and go back to Home, Styles, Conditional Formatting. Choose Bottom 10. The bottom 10 I did leave as red with light red. Now what do you see? There are two rules going. Top 10 and Bottom 10. Keep going. This is how to clear the rules. Go to Home, Styles, Conditional Formatting, Clear Rules. You can clear the rules from these cells or the entire sheet if you wish. Column H is still selected. Go to Home, Styles, Conditional Formatting. Click on Data Bar. Go ahead, have fun. Choose one. Column H is still selected. I've cleared the formatting to try one more. This time, go to Conditional Formatting and choose Color Scales. Choose one. What do you see? Excel is using our data to calculate which color the value should be. Last but not least, clear the formatting and try one more. Go to Conditional Formatting and click on Icon Sets. This lets you show trends in your data, whether it's trending up or down. This works. Excel keeps all these rules in the Rules Manager. Go to Home, Styles, Conditional Formatting and click on Manage Rules. What do you see? The Rules Manager should show you all of the conditional formatting that you have in this spreadsheet. You can edit any one of them by double-clicking it. Double-click the one for the icon sets, and what do you see? You can edit the rule description to fit your own data. Click OK. Now try this. Click on Column E to select the Product column. Go to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. When you are prompted, choose Format Only Cells That Contain and edit the rule description. The cell value should be equal to Type Suites. Now edit the formatting. Please make the letters bold and purple. Click OK and OK. What do you see? Excel formatted our data based on our criteria. Every time it found the word Suites, it made it bold and purple. If you have conditional formatting, you can use those conditions to filter the table as well. Say you went to the top of the last column, Amount, and clicked on the down arrow. What do you see? Now you can filter by the conditions, High, Medium, Low. When we started this lesson, we converted a data range into a table. With Excel, you can always go backwards. You can convert a table back to a regular range. My table is selected and I'm going to go to Table Tools, Design, Tools, Convert to Range. You will be asked, do you really, really want to convert the table to a normal range? Click Yes. The data is there, the formatting is there, however you no longer have the functions of a table. So we're back to where we began. Ollie Ollie and Free, you done good, you get the cookie. This is the Computer Mama and thank you for coming.